OK, this tutorial is going to teach you how to make the blades of a little windmill here, wind generator. There's a motor in there, and when you hook that up and put it in a wind tunnel, it's going to spin and generate voltage. And we're going to see how much voltage you can get out of these blades. OK, so I'm going to teach you how to make this part. I'm going to screen share. The software that you want to open is called Autodesk Inventor. Okay, it's available on all the machines in the drafting room, and you can even get a free student version uh, with your student card. You just take a picture and you can get a free student version. When you open it up, you might see something that says start learning and, and start working. If you want to watch some videos and learn more, you can do the start learning one. But if you want to just jump into it, you can do start working. Okay, so first thing we do is create a new file. Now, I think when you open this the first time, it's just going to be on uh, Imperial, which is like inches and feet. I don't like that. I like metric. So open that up, go to metric, standard millimeter part. I'm going to be giving you some specific dimensions to put in in millimeters, so you're going to want to use that. First thing to do is start a sketch. It doesn't really matter which plane that you choose. I'm going to choose that one. Why not? Uh, you can always rotate things later. OK, so I'm going to create the shaft portion of the windmill, the center bit. OK, so it's a circle starting right at this origin, which will come in handy later. I'm going to type in 10 millimeters. That's going to be a pretty good size. You could try a little bigger or smaller, but you can't go too much smaller because it won't fit the motor then. And now I'm going to turn it into a three dimensional shape by extruding. The default is 10, I think, so I'm, I want a little bit more. Let's try 20. OK, that's good enough for the center shaft for now. Now I'm going to start making the blades themselves. I'm going to start a new sketch, but this time it's not going to be the same one. I could do that one or I could do, uh, yeah, let's do that one. OK, and I kind of feel like looking at it this way right now. So you can use this cube and some buttons around it to move it. And I'm going to do something called a spline. Spline is a kind of a free drawing tool. And this is kind of like the blade from the side view. OK, so I, I finished it. It's in there, but I can't see it very well. That's OK. It is there. I'm going to finish the sketch. And then in order to see it, I would actually turn off the visibility of, of my part. And there it is. I can turn that back on. And there it is. OK, now I'm going to uh, make a new work plane that is offset from that plane that I just used. That one. I'm just going to pull it out here. It doesn't really matter how far. That's fine. I can always adjust that later. And I'm going to start a sketch on that plane. And once again, I kind of feel like I want to look at it this way. And you know what? I can finish this sketch just so I can um, make that solid invisible because I do want to refer to my original sketch. So I'm going to go back to the right and I'm going to rotate it upwards just because I want to. And I'm going to start. Uh, my sketch actually it's already started it's sketch three i did start it i didn't do anything with it yet but i can go back into it and i'm going to use the spline and now think of it like kind of maybe the mid part of the blade maybe it's a little bigger i don't know something like that that's good enough for now i can change it later and now i have two i can press this home button whenever and it kind of spins it out in a nice spot I'm going to create another plane that is even farther out. I'm going to do four in total. And so it's from the same one, extended out even farther than the last one. Sure, that's good for now. Just hit enter and start another sketch on that. Maybe this part is now getting towards the end of the blade. Let's turn it again. And I want it to be maybe a bit smaller than that. I could go even smaller than my first one if I wanted to. And that's good for now. And then I'm going to do one last plane offset from the plane. Same one. The maximum blade length is about 60, I think. So uh, if you go too much further than that, it's going to hit uh, the wall or the roof of the wind tunnel. OK, so if you go any further than that, watch out. It might hit something. So start sketch on that guy. And this one is easy. I'm just going to put a point. I want to close off the windmill at some point right there. And now I have three loops and a point. And I'm going to do something cool called a loft. And loft says take one shape, blend it into the next, pull it into the next, and then pull it into a point. Oh, that's way too pointy, so no problem. All right. So I said OK, but it went away. That's all right. It's just because the object is invisible right now. Yeah, I'm not too happy with that. So I'm going to move 
one of my work planes, work plane two, needs to be much closer to the end. So maybe that goes like to 51. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Okay, so you can make more planes than this or less. Uh, maybe I think it is too thick maybe in the middle. So I could go back to sketch three and I can maybe make it thinner. Save on material and maybe weight and maybe it's going to be more efficient. I don't know. OK, so there is. One blade and now the fun part begins. You get to choose how many blade blades you want. There's something called a circular pattern. And we're going to do it with the whole solid that we've made so far. So it's already selected and then we need something to rotate around. So I click on the rotation axis and whichever one's right through the middle of it is it the x no is it the y no it's the z so the z one is going to give me a rotation and there's the default is six blades that looks pretty cool you can click the home button get a good look at it that looks not too bad um, if i want less blades no problem go back into it maybe let's make four i don't know there's four blades okay so choose whatever number you want you can make actually more than one now i want a hole in this to fit the motor and it's just a simple circle and the size i think i that worked for me was 6.3 millimeters that's what i recommend finish the sketch now i'm going to extrude that but instead of adding material out longer i'm going to go the other way and i'm going to cut right now it's cutting right through and so i would end up with a big hole there i don't think that's very aerodynamic so i'm just going to change that to 10. that's halfway through Oh, that didn't work exactly. So no problem. I can go into it again. I accidentally just typed one. Ten. Twitter. Okay. Cool. Now about the front. I don't like how it's flat at the front because I don't feel like that's very aerodynamic. So I'm going to do something cool called a fillet, which means click the edge and it'll round it off. You can do two. You can do three. You can do four, uh, or you can do maximum of five right because it's a 10 millimeter diameter if i try to do six it just doesn't even know what to do so it won't do it so i'm going with five but i don't like how it's kind of cutting into my blade so i can make a different change i can change that first extrusion way back at the beginning i can do it for 24 millimeters instead of 20 and i just like the look of that better so i'm feeling happy with this so i'm done uh, so first thing i'm going to file save as um, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to go with min windmill, and since I've done a couple of them before, it's going to be four. No four. And that is saved as a .ipt file, windmill4.ipt, and that's uh, an inventor file that you could always go back to and make changes. Now, to 3D print, click File, hover over the Print button, but don't click it, and then click the 3D Print Preview. And now I'm going to show you some defaults that you might want to change. Uh, I think it defaults to BREP, but I change it to high resolution. Gets a bit more definition. And I think your default might have said centimeters, which we have been working in millimeters. Otherwise, it'll come out really small. A couple of changes. Click OK. Then the disks, the two little disks, save it as a different file type, .stl, which uh, is good for 3D slicers. So I'm going to save that windmill for and now I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second here because I have to share a different um, type of screen in a second. So then I'm going to um, open up Cura. Actually, I'm just going to click on Windmill 4, which um, opens up in Cura, and then I'll share my screen. OK, so I'm clicking on the STL file that I just made. And then uh, I will screen share that one. Got a few different ones open. That's when it came out too small. I'm going to close that one. See, that was when it thought I was doing it in centimeters. Uh, so we're getting a new one. I think it's just kind of slow. Ah, there it is. OK. So now I can screen share that one. Got a lot of windows open. That's not the right one. Sorry, it's hard to see which one. Mm. 
No. Ah, oh, that was it. I just closed it. Okay, I gotta open it again. Sorry about that. It's a little hard to jump between teams and Kira. It's still opening. Okay. There it is. Now I should be able to share that piece with you. There it is. Windmill 4. Nice. So here's my little 3D model on the build plates for the Ultimaker. Now I can slice that and I can preview it. There it is. And I can go up and down the layers. Um, so I think some of your defaults might need to be changed. Uh, first of all, um, if you do the support, we're going to need support because those blades are going to be printed in midair otherwise. So if you go to support, there's one called generator support. I type in SUPP and it gives me everything related. If your default was off, I'm not sure what the default is, but you need to turn it on, generate support. And it's going to use extruder one, which is the same extruder as the model. Good. You can go full screen on that one. Okay, then um, adhesion is how it sticks to the plate. So I'm going to type ADH. And I don't know if your default is on skirt or brim, but I like brim for this because it's going to give a more, more grip on the glass to stick down. Okay, so slicing that. And I think we're pretty much good to go. I've got the brim is the bottom part, and then it builds some support underneath those blades and then there's my blades and that should print very nice and that's all you would need.